<sighs> it feels so refreshing to be able to say that almost 24 hours ago, I was able to watch Hot Ones again. Now, yeah, Grant, it wasn't in like the, uh, the format that every Hot Ones fan is accustomed to. You know, we are still in that sort of phase where things are slowly but surely starting to get back to normal, and that's fine. You know, we may do with what we have. And for what, you know, we got, I have to say I was thoroughly satisfied. Good morning and happy Friday, everybody. That means it's Rita's day for me. And so, uh, we, uh, yesterday got a new episode of Hot Ones. It was very entertaining. Um, you know, and you know it's going to be an entertaining episode when in that cold opening moment, Tom Segura's like, yep, this was worse than the last time. Because he'd been on Hot Ones before. And, you know, his episode was actually, you know, very poignant. Like, for starters, apparently he got, like, in some sort of Twitter beef war with professional wrestlers. I'm like, dude, I'm thinking to myself, you know, people have gone back and forth with, oh, professional wrestling's real, professional wrestling's fake. Regardless of what you think is fake or real, I can tell you what is real, and that is... Those guys don't look like that for show. They do not. You know, it's not like they put on, like, some sort of, like, jacket with a zipper on the back and then, like, to reveal what they really... No, they look like that for a reason. And they will destroy you if you if you mess with them. It's also I don't really, you know, make fun of mess with anyone who I know for a fact can, you know, kill me. Uh, let's see what else, uh, pretty, oh, well, the first question that Sean Evans had asked Tom, you know, I ended up being right about, you know, how has, well, basically how has he been able to hold and handle himself, and really all comedians in general, because, um, you know, all stand-up comedians really haven't been able to, uh, Again, COVID-19 if I don't say I'm comedians. Can't really do stage on stand-up if, you know, you can't do it in front of an audience. And, <laughs> that would be so, that would be so like me where I'm like, if I was a stand-up comedian, I would have like, again, stage like during, I was like, hey, what's going on? Like, no one's there. I'm like, does no one like me? No, but I would know. I would know why, um. Why nothing's, you know, happening because, uh, no one's there. So, yeah. Um, although this was actually a really funny point in the episode where, uh, you know, uh, during, um, during, I believe it was, I think it was when he was having the bomb where, uh, both two of his comedian friends, uh, uh, Jesus Trejo and Burt Kreischer, obviously, were, um, well, comedian buddies and, well, Burt Kreischer's also his podcast friend as well, so, yeah, kind of, kind of, you can actually, where they both asked him questions, right? And, Burt ends up asking him, okay, if you could be a superhero in a movie, a superhero in an established movie, in which the actor and everything is already set up, who would you, you know, what superhero would you be? What actor would you replace? And what would you add differently to the role? First, through all like the heat and emotion that uh, Tom's going through, he's like, man, Bert, what? Just ask one question. Why'd you ask like, how many questions do you need to ask? So yeah, it really does show that that's how great the, um, the, uh, how great in terms of levels of heat the sauce is. Oh, oh, ah, excuse me. So, apparently, according to Tom, he would replace uh, Val Kilmer's Batman. I forget what he said as to how he would, how, what he would actually bring new to the role, but, yeah, that's actually more of an answer than I thought anyone would get, so, 
you know, give give props for props to do. Um, so yeah, last night was uh, pretty um, you know, pretty chill. I got to hang with my folks a little bit. They actually had a um, a sort of fancy party to go to, but I hung out with them for a little bit. You know, uh, <laughs> they actually just gave me a uh, you know leftovers. So I'm like, hey, cool, I got dinner for. Oh, it's nice. So, yeah, leftovers. So, um, I mentioned how I made the leftover pork chop, so I pretty much had that. There's also leftover potatoes and salad, so I had that as well. So, yeah, it was a very nice, relaxing dinner that I had by myself. But I got to see my folks. The important thing is, I got to see my folks at all. That is the important thing. You know, would it have been nice to have a nice dinner as a family? Sure. But... You know, even in this day and age, even with people, you know, being off as much as they are due to, you know, you know, COVID-19 and whatever, you know, being able to see family is a bit of a luxury. So, you know, it's, it's nice to, you know, have, have it even for, even for a little bit. Um, so yeah, and then when I got back, um, got back to my apartment, I watched, uh, Celebrity Watch Party, which, um, was more of a, uh, Father's Day watch party. Um, no kidding, though. This is actually the first episode they premiered when, uh, after Raven Simone got married. Yeah. Uh, her name is now Raven Simone Madej. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, I will admit, it's, it's so surreal whenever I hear that, like, for whatever, for, you know, something great happens to, like, a Disney Channel star, be it good or bad. I mean, there was, like, a couple of years ago when, like, that one Disney Channel star died. He wasn't, like, very old. I think he was, like, maybe uh, late teens, early 20s. He's, like, in the, like, Descendant movies, I think. I never watched them, but I hear a lot about them. Like, he recently died, and that was, that was pretty sad. But it's also, um, but whenever you hear something great, like, it's just so surreal, because, like, I watch them on TV. And now they're, like, married. It's very odd. <laughs> in a good way, though, in a very good way. So, I highly doubt Raven Simone is ever going to watch this, but, you know, congratulations, ma'am, on your uh, recent marriage. I hope the two of you have a wonderful life together. You know, that's... Pretty much, you know, that goes without saying. So, uh, yeah, that, that's nice. And in terms of things they watched, um, they watched not this week's episode of America's Got Talent, but the week before, where, uh, where, like, what, where, uh, the uh, dance crew from New York City, uh, Waffle, they were, they were on, which they were really cool, which, you know, it was nice seeing them again. Um, they watched, uh, the celebrities watched Good Morning America. On, uh, on the sharks, which, okay, sharks are, uh, well, here's the thing, yeah, sharks are definitely scary, in fact, just ask the generation prior to mine, they'll tell you that Jaws is the very reason why they were f afraid and utterly terrified to get in the water at all, seriously, even to this day, like, my, f my, my father will always tell me, that, like, Jaws, actually everyone in my family will tell me that, like, Jaws was the reason why, like, they couldn't get in the water at Cuco Lake. But Nick, it's like, well, that's how good of a movie Jaws was. You know, it was so scary that, uh, you know, they were afraid to get in the water at Cuco Lake where there are absolutely no sharks whatsoever. So, yeah, that's how good of a movie it was. Um, needless to say, yes... Whenever we do hear about a shark attack, of course, it's nothing short of tragic. But more often than not, sharks don't really attack people. I'll tell you what, though. If you really... Not that you'd ever actually want this, but let's say you actually want a shark to come and attack you. Believe it or not, when a person's on a surfboard, like, paddling out, you know, like this. Not actually, just, but you get the idea. Like, that actually looks like a seal to a shark. And, that, and sharks eat seals. So... Yeah, 
That 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 legitimately happens. Um, in terms of other shows they watch, they watched uh, Sex in the City, which again really was not my show growing up at all. In fact, for the longest time, I kind of no idea it existed. And I get the feeling Sex in the City would be the kind of show that maybe I would sit down and watch and like if I was like with the right audience, maybe. I think. I don't know. I mean, listen, I am extremely comfortable with my sexuality. I want to be very, you know, open about that. So if I had to sit down and watch, like, Sex in the City or a bunch of other chip flicks, as long as I was, like, with the right audience, I'd be okay with it. Sure. You know, with good people. Although, there better be snacks. You know, I ain't gonna... I ain't watching stuff I probably, it probably does appeal to me on an empty stomach. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, another show they watched is one of my all time favorite classics, Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmer, in which, you know, Andrew Zimmer is one of the main reasons why I am a foodie because, you know, yeah, there's lots of foods I would try. Like, um, fish sperm. Yeah, they had that on Bizarre Foods. I'd try it. Um, they had, uh, you know, testicles, too. Sure, i try that. It's actually called, when you uh, slice them and deep fry them, they're called Rocky Mountain Oysters, which, of course, I would definitely try. Um, I also watch uh, Night on Earth, which involves, uh, you know, spiders and bug-eating plants. And, man, that looked awesome. I want to see more. Uh, Good Morning America. Uh, on a Juneteenth, which, you know, it is a rather important how which, you know, now corporate America is starting to recognize as a holiday, but, you know, it really does show that even though, yes, corporate America does, you know, associate Juneteenth as a paid holiday, you know, the fight is still not over. So, um, yeah, you know, we gotta remember that. And that actually goes into something else that, well, I guess maybe I could talk about this as well. In a way, it's sort of similar to, um, you know, the LGBTQIA community. Because, and I mentioned this when I talked about Steven Universe a while ago. Like, when it was made legal for same-sex couples to be married... That was huge. That was great. But if you think that, you know, the struggles of that community were limited solely on, you know, you know, marriage, you are sadly mistaken. There's still a lot to do. To put things into perspective, like, um, and this may get a little bit more adult oriented, so if you don't want to watch this part, you know, fine. You know, there's the concepts of, uh, you know, rape. I mean, rape is bad no matter what, but believe it or not, it happens a lot in the LGBTQIA community as well. And because people don't care enough about it, they don't report it. Or unfortunate or unfortunately maybe the the uh the guy the, the rapist was just so clever at what they did they got away with it. It's still sad, you know, it's still bad, but, you know, that's the sort of struggle that we, that everyone has. And again, I'm straight, but, you know, I do support the community. It's so, it's so nice to know these things. So it helps me to learn more, helps me to be more engaging in such conversations like this, you know, so yeah, that's. That's why I take the time to learn it. I mean, it's important. It really is. I mean, again, I may be straight, but, you know, when you learn more about this stuff, it can actually help you down the line. And I feel it's helped me down the line, too, in terms of, you know, learning more and therefore, you know, being able to help out in any way I can. And uh, finally, the celebrities watched uh, some sort of documentary on uh, dads. Well, it was Father's Day weekend. Where, um, you know, 
Yeah, a, a celebrities are interviewed, celebrity fathers are interviewed, regular fathers are interviewed on the joys of being a father. And, you know, it really got me thinking. I mean, yeah, I want to be in a relationship one day, sure. And, you know, of course I want to be a father. In fact, um, the other day I got to hold my nephews and, you know, all it did was reaffirm that, you know, I want to become a father to, you know, beautiful children. I do. But, you know, it's stuff that, you know, I need to work on myself. Yeah, it's hard. And admittedly, at this moment in time, I'm not ready to be a father. But, you know, as soon as I find the right woman, although I do kind of have my eye on someone, you know, as soon as, you know, form a, a nice relationship, you know, you know, you know, build upon it, you know, build it out of love and trust, you know, then, you know, ask the question, you know, will you marry me? And, you know, it takes time. It does. And I'm more than willing to do it if I have to. This was a good day, I think. Like, favorite, share, hit the subscribe button, follow me on social media platforms, turn on those engagements on YouTube. I enjoy home and this video for all of you guys who watch for today. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday. Anyway, if you guys want to talk or channel with me, you're going to be back. Take care and make good choices. See ya.